afternoon. It's Monday, April the 27th. Keeping track of our days. Gets harder and harder every day, it seems like. I am in a different place. Can you tell? Brenda said, why don't you try some other place to make it look a little more, you know, fresh? That's probably a good idea. So here I am. I'm in the living room and uh, talking with you. So I'm hoping that this works out okay for you. Hey, <clears throat> going to do something this week. I'll try to do something each week that we are apart, kind of breaking it down each day a little bit, a passage of Scripture. And I'm doing one of my very, very favorites. It's found in Ephesians chapter 3. It's Paul's prayer for the Ephesians. <clears throat> and we'll look at that and start that today and end it at the end of the week. Before we get there, though, I said I would talk a little bit about uh, what our plan is about getting back into church. And uh, I don't know if you've seen it. There is a, a, a plan that the mayor has put out. So let me talk to it just a little bit. <clears throat> we still don't have a date. We, we just don't have a date yet. We are in phases. All right? We are not even into phase one yet. To get to phase one, we are going to have to have our incidence of reportage of coronavirus, COVID-19, go down. The, um, the markers, they will tell us that it has gone down. When it goes down, then, when it goes down for 14 days, then we'll be in phase one. And what happens in phase one? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've got it right here. In phase one, doesn't help us at all as a church. We're not involved yet. The uh, retail stores are half capacity. Um, restaurants, half capacity. We're all supposed to wear masks. If you're 65 and above, guess who that involves? You're supposed to stay at home if you're high risk also. Work at home if it's possible. No schools. No gatherings of 10 and over. So that means there's nothing. We don't have anything going on on the church premises in phase one. And again, we're not in phase one. We'll be told when we're in phase one. By the way, 7.30, I don't know if it's on other channels, but channel four, W, I forget what it is now. Anyway, channel four, the local station, is going to have the uh, a virtual community meeting with the mayor and his task force. It's going to be a number of questions asked there. <clears throat> You'll probably get your questions asked. I'm going to be watching it. Might encourage you to watch it as well. And hopefully you'll get a little more clarity. Now, phase one will go into phase two if, here's a big if, there's a continuous continuous. 14 days of good news. It's going to take 14 days. If, in a perfect environment, things continue to be stable or go down, not go up, but stable or go down, then phase two will be implemented. Now, what happens in those two weeks if things go back up? Then we go back to phase one. That's it. We don't start phase one, or we don't start phase two, until there's 14 days of good news. They will tell us what that looks like. There we go. Now, when we are in phase two, now it involves us. In phase two, restaurants are open to three-quarter capacity. Of course, there's all the sanitation, cleanliness, and that's, that's going to be without question. We're still to work from home if possible. Age 65 and above and high risk are to stay at home. But in phase two, we can have gatherings of up to 50 people. Of course, social distancing will, is in play. Now, what does that mean for us? As I understand this at this point, in phase two, that first Sunday, we can come back to church if there are no more than 50 people. Now, if you're 60 and above, 65 and above, which involves your pastor, we're not supposed to come. Guess what? I will come. 
I will have my mask. I'm not going to preach in a mask. All right, I look better in a mask. I understand that, but I am not going to preach in a mask. I will be far enough away from you. Unless you fall under the Holy Spirit, you're fine. So keep my distance. Whenever there is the social environment potential, I will put my mask on. So that that's to be said. Now, how about the 50? Well, we're going to have our deacons ask you, do you plan to be there next week? And you're going to let us know the week prior to us coming so that we're going to make sure that we have 50 or thereabouts. If we are more than that, a little bit more than that, let's say we're going to be 60 or 65, I think we're fine. I think we're okay because we have a large enough worship area that we can spread out and it should not be a problem whatsoever. Okay. But we will talk about that and let you know 100% on that week prior to when we come in. But more than likely, my thinking is that many of, of you are going to say, well, phase two is good, but it's not good enough. I want to wait till the next phase, phase three. How do we get to phase three? Phase three is going to be another 14 days. Of 14 days of good news. Stable or improving news about COVID-19, hospitalization, death, all of the markers that they have. They will let us know, all right, we're in phase three. What does that do for us? In phase three, we can now be still be in church, but the volume has increased to 100 people. Again, in a church service, usually we have anywhere between 100 and 150 people. That's about it. That's what we've been averaging. So again, I think we're going to be okay. Still remain socially distant and mindful of, of wearing masks, that whole thing, cleaning things. We will still have our cleaning teams in place and doing things. Then phase four, when is that going to happen? Two more weeks of solid uh, uh, information where things are coming back, good, improving, stable, and they will say phase four. We're phase four. We can move around and do things much more. We're still to be socially. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Phase four. They're still saying if you're 65 and above or high risk, stay at home. Work from home, wear masks, gatherings over 100 permitted, and so forth. So we're pretty much loosened at that point, and we would be um, able to have everybody there, no problem. We'll still try to maintain social distance. We'll pro probably still be trying to do masks and so forth. It's going to get harder the longer we do it. I recognize that. But we have to remain as vigilant as possible so that we can we can really try as best we can to end this pandemic. And it is a challenge without a doubt. Now, in that phase two, our first coming back, let me tell you there will be some modified things. Probably when you come to the door, there's only going to be one greeter, and it will probably be me or Mark. We will open the door for you. We will not give you a hug or a handshake. We will stay away from you. Doesn't that sound sad? It is. It's very sad. But it will be good to see you. You are encouraged to wear a mask. We want you to wear a mask. We, we are going to have hand sanitation pumps for you to do this kind of stuff. We will not have any kind of, of interaction of greeting time. We will not have Sunday school. We will not have Wednesday night services. That's in those phase two meetings. Now, oh, by the way, I will not greet you at the door as you leave so that there can be an easy egress out of the building. We don't want to crowd up the uh, foyer. We want to be able to make it easy for you to um, stay away from large settings of lots of people. And now here's something. I don't, I can't believe my deacons didn't believe this. But I'm going to try to preach shorter. 
Why? We'd like to start our service at 1030, end by 1130. We will have child care. We worship down at the normal place, but we're going to train our our workers down there. We're going to have a check-in in that area. We are going to check temperatures and ask questions from the parents because obviously when you have little guys, it's going to be hard, impossible to keep them socially distant. So if we end at 1130, that will make it less likely for you to need the bathroom. Sounds like a good idea. And and also be able to get the parents to the children in a more timely fashion. So start on time, end on time. There'll be no choir. Uh, that's probably until July. We will have to watch and continue to watch as to what's going on, what's happening, so that we'll know what phase we're in. I would encourage you to download the information. It's readily available on a number of sites. If you want it available uh, on our website, let us know. We might even put it up there for you. Uh, I might ask Mark to do that. I think I can do that. I've got the I've got the information. We we make it uh, available to you. And again, <clears throat> Wednesday night would be a good time to to tune into Channel Four, or it might be all of the networks. I'm not sure. And listen to what the mayor has to say. Uh, undoubtedly, there will be a question somewhere along the way about church worship and what is our protocol in getting back together. At this point. My understanding, phase two. And again, you've got to watch. You've got to listen. We'll put it out there for you. I'll mention on our talks, hey guys, we're in phase one. So in two weeks, if everything works well, our first date is going to be. But stay tuned till next week and let's make sure that those statistics remain where they're supposed to be. So that's kind of where we're doing it, how we're doing things. Going to keep an, an an attitude of expectancy, but also willingness to watch out for our neighbors. It's very likely you're not going to catch this, but it's really likely you're not going to catch it if you do the right thing. And when we do this, what we're doing is we're watching out not just for our own health, but for the health of our neighbors. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Golden rule. That's what we're doing. That's why we're doing it. Do I want freedom? You betcha, man. Am I getting tired of this? Absolutely. Are we learning things? Yes. And that's what I'm going to preach on beginning on Sunday. Finding good things in bad times. Finding good things in bad times. So next Sunday, I'm going to start a series that will last for the next, oh, four or five weeks. And we're going to look at some bad times in the scripture and the good things that they learned about it. I think it's important for you and me to constantly be, as I've been saying over and over again, trust that God knows what he's doing. He's all wise. He's all loving. Don't take things into your own hands. Don't become God. You aren't. And secondly, during this time, is to in bad times, what good things can we learn? So I think it's going to be a good time. It's going to be some new material that I have been I have I've been thinking about. I just believe that God's leading me to to teach on this. And I'm looking forward to opening up and, and learning stuff and sharing it with you. So now. I'm, it's It's been 15 minutes already I've been talking. I'm not going to do a Bible study today. However, here is your assignment. Read Ephesians chapter 2 and chapter 3 with a special attention to chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. That is the prayer that I want us to look at And we're going to take it kind of phrase by phrase. It's one of my, if you ask me, what are your top three? This would be one of my top three in the entire Bible. It has a depth of uh, 
of learning and and a, and a humbling love that we experience. So I, I want you to look at chapters 2. And you want to read chapter 1? Be my guest. But firstly, especially chapters 2, as it leads into chapter 3 in this prayer in verse 14. Okay? All right. I'm going to end there for the day. I have really spoken long enough, and I thank you for your attention. You have questions? Text me, call me, email me. I'll do my best. Call your deacon. If you have a need, he is right there for you, and so am I. We love you. Want the best for you. We're trying our best to do our best in these kind of times. Love you all. Talk to you tomorrow.